morning, everyone. Welcome to this special service here, this home service with you and your home. Thank you that I can be there with you. Thank you that everyone else who's watching can also be there with you. I know that they're not really there. And I also miss the fellowship of having church together. But the truth is that God is there with you, the Good Shepherd. And that's what this service is about. Jesus, the Good Shepherd, comes to us. Jesus is the Good Shepherd. We hear this in the watchword in John chapter 10. I am the Good Shepherd. My sheep listen to my voice. I know them and they follow me. I give them eternal life. And so today is, such a, is defined by such a beautiful picture of Jesus as the Good Shepherd and we the sheep. The perfect picture of a shepherd and sheep is one that is beautiful. A shepherd who loves and cares. A shepherd who knows each sheep by name. Who is able to tell if they're sick because he knows the animal. A shepherd who knows where to find good food. Leads them to what they need. Into quiet waters so they can quench their thirst. And that is the picture. That is how God introduced himself through Jesus to us. That is who God is for us. But we are also those who must follow him, to know, his, to know him, to follow his voice, to obey. And so let us celebrate the service in the name of God the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen.
words of Psalm 23, the most famous psalm in the entire world. The Lord is my shepherd. The Lord is my shepherd. I lack nothing. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. He refreshes my soul. He guides me along the right paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. Surely goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Heavenly, loving, almighty God, you are Lord of lords and King of kings. There is no one like you. And yet, you know each one of us by name. Throughout the Bible, you told us about yourself, that you are the good shepherd. Jesus, you confirmed this when you lived on earth. God, you are the good shepherd who knows his sheep. You do not want us to be simple like sheep, but rather trusting like sheep. You want us to know you, to love you, to follow you. Lord, during this lockdown, we have lost a lot of control over our own lives. The false security in our lives is quickly vanishing, all except you. You do not change. You are with us even in lockdown. We pray that you lead and guide us today through this service. Amen. The epistle reading for today is found in 1 Peter chapter 2 verses 21b to 25. Christ suffered for you, leaving you an example that you should follow in his steps. He committed no sin and no deceit was found in his mouth. When they hurled their insults at him, he did not retaliate. When he suffered, he made no threats. Instead, he entrusted himself to him who judges justly. He himself bore our sins in his body on the cross, so that we might die to sins and live for righteousness. By his wounds you have been healed. For you were like sheep going astray, but now you have returned to the shepherd and overseer of your souls. Here ends the reading. The Gospel comes from John chapter 10, verses 11 to 16. I am the Good Shepherd. The Good Shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. The hired hand is not the shepherd and does not own the sheep. So when he sees the wolf coming, he abandons the sheep and runs away. Then the wolf attacks the flock and scatters it. The man runs away because he is a hired hand and cares nothing for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my sheep, and my sheep know me, just as the Father knows me, and I know the Father, and I lay down my life for the sheep. I have other sheep that are not of this sheep pen. I must bring them also. They too will listen to my voice. And there shall be one flock and one shepherd. Here ends the reading. Let us confess our faith with the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life 
everlasting. Amen. Jesus, we need you. We need your strength, we need your guidance, we need your wisdom and your truth. And so we know and confess that you are the good shepherd and we will follow you. And so open our hearts to your word today. Amen. Right now, we in South Africa, like so many other countries in the world, are in a lockdown. And this is not a lo voluntary lockdown, it's a legally binding lockdown. There are thousands of policemen and women and soldiers patrolling our streets, making sure that we adhere to the laws. They are here to actually protect us, to make sure that as few people as possible are infected now, to buy our health care system and our government time to prepare for the infections that will come. This has been a very difficult few weeks. It's been a month now. We are still going to have a very difficult time ahead of us, probably months. What we hear from our official news channels, from the government, is that they are expecting the infection rate to peak in September, October this year. It's only a guess, a guesstimate, using the best algorithms and mathematics that they can. It's been a very, very difficult time. But I have to say, I'm so proud of my fellow South Africans. I'm so proud also of you, my brothers and sisters in the United Lutheran Congregation. The other day I phoned one of our members for their birthday, and they shared with me how this birthday has been extremely unique. Not because it was during a lockdown, but because of the amount of phone calls and messages and, and videos that they've received for their birthday. They only, they hardly had time to have a, a shower and something to eat before the phone starts ringing again, buzzing. A new, another well-wisher for their birthday. 
You have gone above and beyond. You are trying to, to care, to phone, to be there as much as you can in this very, very difficult time. You are performing acts of random kindness. And that makes me very, very proud. And some of you, even where you can, you are checking up on your neighbors every morning to see how they're doing, even if it is from afar. And while reflecting on the anxiety that I feel on how numerous and daunting the changes have been, I realized how proud I truly am of you in this congregation. I don't think, I do not believe, that this would have been as easy if God had not shaken us to the very core during this, through this amalgamation that we have been through in the past few years. On the 13th of May, 2018, three Lutheran congregations in our area, in the same area, congregations Harburg, Wartburg, and New Hanover, where I live now, united to become one new congregation the United Evangelical Lutheran Congregation, UELC. This was no easy task. It cost a lot of time, a lot of planning, many meetings, a lot of interaction with everyone, and a lot of personal growth. I can speak for myself. But it also cost a lot of heartache, grief, and sacrifice. It was such a difficult decision for many to leave the church buildings that they grew up, the buildings that they were baptized in, the buildings that they came to every Sunday and met their friends, the buildings in which they were confirmed, the buildings in which they got married, the buildings in which they buried their loved ones or said goodbye. It was very difficult. It was so difficult for some that they expressed a feeling of homelessness. They felt without foundation. Some even expressed a feeling of feeling lost, of being angry, afraid and anxious. Suddenly the congregations that gave you security throughout your lifetimes were going to change. And many of you went through a time of deep existential crisis, asking the question, why am I here? What is this for? Many had to search deep to find a new source of security, a new source of belonging and of peace. But I can say that God had, has been and is still at work in you. He brought us all to our knees and forced us to rely on Him alone. He wanted to be the only foundation in our lives, the only source of strength, of hope and belonging. And so, because of the changes, the unification brought with it, many of you had to put all your hope and trust in God, even more than you did before. One of you even said, my peace does not depend on whether I'm in the brass band or in the church buildings. My peace comes from my relationship with God. And I will never forget that. It brought you to a place where you trust God and He brings you the comfort that you need, the security that you need today. God is your comfort. And I want to share with you today that I believe that God was also preparing us, He was preparing you for times like this and for times like this that are still to come. This was God's work in and around us in the recent past. The unification has enabled us to take this lockdown and this change more easily because we were together. But more importantly, our faith was not dependent on things happening the same way, but rather on Jesus Christ. And we know that Jesus is with us wherever we are, no matter what changes we experience. You see, God has been at work and he has been preparing, preparing us. The truth is that God is always at his work. To quote uh, Henry Blackaby in his book, Experiencing God. You might have heard me preach about this a few times in Harburg. God is always at his work. And he was and he is at work in and through us. 
We do not always see it, but he is always at his work preparing us for what he has in store for us. Life is not about us, it's about God. God is at his work and we are called to work in his vineyard, not our lives. God wants to involve us in what he's doing. He's not involved in the world like a frantic politician trying to gain votes. No, God is involved in the world as the almighty creator. The one who defines the way of the world. He, there is no other like our God. Even Jesus expressed this truth in John chapter 5. My father is still working. And I am working. I assure you, the son is not able to do anything on his own. But only what he sees the father doing. For whatever the father does, the son also does these things in the same way. For the father loves the son, the son and shows him everything he is doing. See, Jesus recognized that his father is always working on earth to accomplish his purposes. God did not create the world and, and then left it to spin on its own. He didn't abandon it. He's not sitting on some heavenly throne somewhere watching us live our lives like frantic ants running around. He's present and in the middle of human history orchestrating it. God is actively at work redeeming a lost world. And he chooses to involve us, you, his servants, in carrying out his redemptive plans. There are lots of examples of this, but I will mention two. In Exodus 3, verse 7 to 8, we hear of how Moses encountered God in the desert through an angel in the burning bush. There God revealed what he was currently busy with. And I'm going to read Exodus 3, verses 7 to 8. The Lord said, I have indeed seen the misery of my people in Egypt. I have heard them crying out because of their slave drivers, and I'm concerned about their suffering. So I have come down to rescue them from the hand of the Egyptians and to bring them up out of that land into a good and spacious land, a land flowing with milk and honey. You see, God's plan, God's work, God's current activity in that time was to save the Israelites from slavery and to begin leading them to the promised land. He wanted to begin forming his chosen people. Moses argued with God, but he did eventually go. What God sets out to do, he accomplishes. But he wants us to be involved. Not to do it and accomplish it out of our own resources and strength, but he wants us to be involved. So that we can also experience God at his mighty work. Another example is where Peter was shown a vision of a, of a blanket full of food and animals, clean and unclean. And he said to him, kill and eat. Through this vision and the following encounters with the church and with people, the church learned that God's purpose at that time was also to bring salvation forgiveness and love to the non-Jews, to the Gentiles as well. God never wanted to only bring his salvation to a small group of people. His purpose at the time in the book of Acts and in the Gospels was to bring salvation to everyone. What is God doing? The Apostle Paul talks about this in the second letter to the church at Corinth. Paul says this, therefore, if anyone is in Christ, they are a new creation. The old is gone. Look, new things have come. Now everything is from God who reconciled us to himself through Christ and gave us the ministry of reconciliation. That is, in Christ, God was reconciling the world to himself, not counting their trespasses against them. And he has committed the message, message of reconciliation to us. And therefore, we are ambassadors for Christ. Therefore, since the Father is at work reconciling the world to himself, and since he has chosen to carry out that reconciliation through his people, what are we supposed to do? How are we to, supposed to respond to this commission? And the answer is simple. Look to the shepherd. 
Look to the example of Jesus. He was telling us in straightforward, plain language what we are to do. We are to follow his example. And what was his example? He said, the Father is always at his work. The Father has me working. And I do, do, I do nothing out of my own initiative. I watch to see what the Father is doing. And I do what I see the Father doing. The Father loves me. He shows me everything that he himself is doing. Now Jesus often spoke about his relationship with the Father and his dependence on the Father to show him what to do. Jesus made it clear that the Father initiated the relationship and invited the Son to be involved in his activity. The Father revealed his plan and the Son joined the Father in his work. This is the example that Jesus gave for us to follow. And Jesus often spoke of his relationship with the Father. John 7 verse 16, My teaching is not mine, but it is from the one who sent me. John 8 verse 28, When you lift up the Son of Man, then you will know that I am He, and I do nothing on my own. But just as the Father taught me, I say these things. In John 10 verse 37 to 38, If I am not doing my Father's works, don't believe me. But if I am doing them and you don't believe me, believe the works. This way you will know and understand that the Father is in me and I in the Father. And in John 12 verse 49, For I have not spoken on my own, but the Father himself who sent me has given me a command as to what I should speak. There are many verses. I could carry on and on. But I hope that you understand, Jesus set us an example. God the Father is at work. He watched to see what the Father is doing. And He went and joined in. And this is exactly what God wants us to do. He wants us to know Him, His voice, to know who He is, so that we are able to recognize when He is at work. And when we recognize Him at work, that's God inviting you to become involved. And you go do it straight away. So how can we become involved? What is God doing now? Well, it's very simple. Number one, spend time with God, know Him. But secondly, acts of random kindness. Acts of random kindness. Ark. I, I in, this is such an inspiration from Evan Almighty. Ark. Acts of random kindness. It's such a deep but simple truth. A random act of kindness can be phoning someone to see, ask the question, how are you? It can be sending a verse that has inspired you to someone to encourage them. An email. A video. Music. It can be sending someone money that you've got on your heart that you feel maybe needs this. Right now in South Africa, we have a crisis. Not just a COVID-19 infection crisis, but because of this in the lockdown, many, many people are getting hungrier and hungrier and more desperate by the hour. We can help by donating money to a charity that supports them, that feeds them. We can be kind to people, the policemen, women, the soldiers, those who are protecting us, the medical staff. We can encourage them. We can start by doing a random act of kindness by sewing masks or distributing them if you are able to. There's so much that we can do Right now, God has given us an opportunity in this country, in this whole world. He has shaken our country. He has shaken our society and our industry. He has shaken the world. And He's giving us an opportunity to do what He does. God takes the bad and He makes good come out of it. And so what are we going to do? Are we just going to let the relationships and the problems in South Africa fester and become worse? Or are we going to live out God's love through our actions? 
and start changing our country for the better. Because I believe that God can accomplish it and do it. And I believe in the almighty God who can make wonders happen through small acts of random kindness through his people. And so that is the challenge for us today. May the peace of God that surpasses all human understanding guard your hearts in Christ. Amen. to encourage the members of our congregation to still tithe, to either put some money away and after the lockdown when it is possible to bring it to the church office or to send it via EFT. And today the collection is an aid of the Brass Band Ministry of our church. Some of you have already received or are following the ministry, our ministry on YouTube. Every morning Pastor Ludger prepares a traditional piece and a modern piece of recordings from our praise and worship team, our choir, and our brass band. And so today the collection is an aid of the ministry of those in the brass band. And now let us bow our heads in prayer. Heavenly Father, thank you that you are still at your work in and around us. Thank you, Jesus, that you set an example for us to follow. Obeying the Father cost you your life, and so it does with us. We are called to give, you, give up everything we want to follow you. However, in return, you lead us to a life far fuller and blessed than we could ever have imagined. You bless us through suffering and hardship. You bless us through times of joy and celebration. We will follow you and trust you, even if we must follow you through times of sacrifice and suffering. Because it is was through suffering and sacrifice that you saved us. Lord, live in and through us to accomplish your work in your world. Lead us to the people you want us to share your love and truth with, so that they too can be set free from sin and live for righteousness. But Lord, we also pray for our leaders, our economies, our medical staff, police and soldiers. We pray for all those who are in danger because of their work. We pray for all those who are sick and in danger of losing their lives. We pray for all those who have lost loved ones 
or who have had to be separated because of this pandemic. We pray for all those who are depressed and cannot see any hope. We pray that you bless and help them. If we can help any of them, please open our eyes and hearts to them. We praise you and adore you. We love and trust you. Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let us pray with the words that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, now and forever. Amen. Before I speak the blessing to all of us all over the world, I want to make two last announcements. The first is a plea to pray for us, the pastors of the Nelsa Church, the Northeastern Evangelical Lutheran Church, Southern Africa. I hope I got it right. Tomorrow we are doing a Solidarity Church Run in aid of raising funds for the Solidarity Fund of our church. This fund helps cover the costs of the church and in turn this subsidizes the cost for congregation, which also helps smaller congregations to survive. Thank you to all of those who have already offered to sponsor, um, to help support us in this, and perhaps some of you can pray that we survive. The second uh, announcement that I'd like to make is the creation of a new project through, through our congregation. It's called ARC, Umkombi Relief Project. The aim of this project is to provide food for those who are desperately in need of it. Because of this COVID-19 and the lockdown, many have lost their jobs, are unable to work and buy food. And there's a growing amount of people who are hungry. In order to start it quickly, we've made it a project within our congregation or from our congregation first, um, just to see how it works to work out the kinks, smooth out the rough edges. And once we've done that, we want to invite other churches and communities to become involved. But anyone can donate to this project, and this project is not only for people in the congregation. It is for anyone that you know who is in need. First, we'd like to establish this fund, so as to, we wait for donations to come in. Once we have an initial amount, we're going to buy food, organize it into food packets. And once that, the first food packets are ready, we're going to send out applications to receive help to you. All the information about this project is included in an email that is sent to you in the congregation. Um, and if you'd like to support this, all the information is there. We'd like to thank the UCL company, Unicorn Company Limited in Dalton, for partnering with us. They are going to use the money to buy food, staple food items at bulk cost um, and distribute it freely without any profit on that. They have made space available. They are going to prepare the packets. They are going to then release the food packets once they have gotten the okay from our administration team. We'd also like to thank the four that have volunteered to administer this project on, on our behalf. They will be keeping an eye on things and making sure that everything is above board. They will be administering the applications as well. Thank you for that. And we will keep you informed of any new developments and also wonderful news. We really need to stand together. We need to help each other. And especially people in our communities, our neighbors, people who we employ, who have nothing, we need to help them. And so now, go in the blessing and the peace of the Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look on you with favor and give you his peace. Amen. I wish you 
a wonderful, blessed week. Oh.